Now, this problem that's happening, it was happening on mine and I think with everyone. We had set up a system that we were going to log in, and it's supposed to remember that you've logged in, and it's supposed to keep you logged in. Uh, it looks like for several people it's not working. It wasn't working for me either. So I'm, I was trying to figure out what happened with the code. I can't quite find probably a mistyped letter or something. So what I've done is, you know, I had already the code prepared before the class. So I got the relevant code, and I, I'm just going to give it to you for the moment. I'm sure there's like a little misspelling somewhere that we can find, but in order for this project to work like it was supposed to, if you go back to the network folder, outside of any folder, there will be index.js. Take that and completely replace the index.js in your Visual Studio project. Either copy the code inside of it and paste it into the other one, or replace the file. I just tested it and this should work. We can figure out what the little error was later. I, I already spent enough time trying to figure it out. So replace this index, the contents, with your Visual Studio. So from the network folder, you can just replace your, your index.js file. Just replace it completely. Or you can copy the code inside of it from file to file. index.js Can't hear you? Yes, because you're replacing the old index file that isn't quite working with this one I just put in the folder. Somewhere in that code I missed something, and instead of trying to debug it a little bit more, I just put the code in there. We might, we might spot it, but I'm going to test it one more time. It is supposed to automatically keep you logged in um, on the device. It, it should remember. Um, it should remember who you are. Yes, if you've created an account and uh, have a password, it should go directly to the home screen. That's how it's going to remember who we are. This works best on a mobile device, so if you um, check this on your device. We had the issue last month where we wrote the code, and like I said, on the browser it, it seems to behave a little weird but running it on a, on a real device should automatically take you to the... How your user's doing, if you're trying to sign up again, it just keeps... 
I realized that code that I just gave you, there's a line missing that says as soon as you create the account, go to the login screen. So on the device, it is automatically supposed to go to the home screen once you create a, an app uh, or a, an account. Uh, so it is supposed to remember you because typing the password over and over that would get tedious. There is the system in there that it's supposed to keep you logged in. The the issue that I realized when I gave you this copy of this code in the index JS, I guess this one doesn't include the part about okay. There's sign up, and you do the sign up. missing the part that when you create the account it takes you automatically to welcome line is there. Yeah, so somewhere along the line something happened. But um, it's still supposed to go to the home screen. <coughs> okay, so um, if this takes us to the home screen Uh, what'll come next is some more functionality. Uh, one thing, for example, if I go to the home screen, I'm supposed to be able to navigate now that I get past this welcome and I'm in home, I'm supposed to be able to navigate inside the app. So think about that welcome screen as outside the app and then in the welcome screen you're in. But on an Android device, I have a back button and if I press back, that takes me back to the login screen. I don't want that. I want to disable the back button. I only want to be able to navigate around the app by the navigation that I get in the app. So let me do that again. I, I launched the app. It took me directly to the home screen. I can press back. It's going to take me back where I'm not supposed to go. So we have the ability to disable the back button. We don't have a back button on an iPhone, so you're safe, you're safe there, but on an Android device I have a back button and I can break the whole flow of what I'm trying to do. So what we're going to do is capture the event of the back button and then stop it from actually going back so that we can only navigate from the icons inside of the device, or inside of the app. So I'm going to, whatever you might have been running, I'm going to press stop and I'm going to go back to the index.js file and let's go to the top where we've got the area of event listeners you've got event listeners for when a pause happens for when a resume happens we're gonna create an event for when the back button happens 
is on line 10. Call that document dot add event listener. The event that we're waiting for now, um, we usually always use double quotes. And you might notice that starting example has single quotes. That's perfectly fine. Either or of those will work, double or single quotes. Technically, it's faster to type single quotes because you just type the single quote. Double quotes, you have to hold shift and do the double quotes. Either or will work, but you have to have, if you start a double quote, you have to end a double quote. You can't start a double quote and end it with a single quote. That's wrong. It's not the pair. So I'm going to do the single quote just to keep it the same as what's already there. But double quotes is what we've always done, and you can still do that. So what you could do is go back and change all of those and that one to double quotes. If you want to keep it all perfectly consistent, if that matters, you could. So here we're waiting for the event back button. There's the event that when someone presses their back button on their device, we're going to wait for that event, we're going to capture that event and do something. Previously we've got an on pause and on resume. Isn't universal name? Is what? Is back button a universal name? This is a universal event. Mm -hmm. Yes, Cordova. Um, for any device that has the ability to go back, it will capture that, specifically Android, because iPhone doesn't have a back button. So once we, uh, once we capture the back button, space function on back key down. This is a function we're making up. We're going to say back. I don't think we need this dot bind. I tested it without it, so I'm going to leave it out. Um, comma false like before. Uh, that final false, I believe it's about bubbling or something, so we're just going to keep it. But the big idea is we're waiting for the event of someone pressing the back button. When they press the back button, we'll run a function on back key down. We'll define what that is, and that will prevent the default behavior. So we can add this anywhere we want. We've already got sort of a spot here on, uh, visual, uh, on the Visual Studio project at the very end, where we've got on pause, on resume. I'm going to add this in the same sort of place. At the very end of our code, we already had on pause, on resume. This is where we can create on key back down. So inside of the immediately invoked function, don't go past the ending of that stuff there. Inside function, the one we just call made up right now, on back key down. Uh, you might find it useful to have your error list open as you type, although obviously it's going to give me false errors. I'm not finished typing my code yet and it's telling me there's a problem. But having that error list open might be useful. Open close parentheses, open close curly brace, and I'll break those curly braces. Write some console output here. Console.log. We'll say uh, back key was prevented. Just for us to keep track of that. Uh, it's supposed to using that plugin console, but I haven't seen it on mine either, so I don't know. There might be a bug or something's going on. We are supposed to see console output coming from the device, but I'm not seeing it. 
And um, what will actually happen here is we've got event dot prevent default. The default of pressing back will take you back one point in history. On that event, prevent a back. So in the event of the person trying to press back, prevent it. I'm going to run it in the device to, to confirm that. The way I'm confirming it is it should take me to the login screen. If I try to press back, it should not let me go back. I should see that console output, but again, I don't know why I haven't seen console output on, um, on here, but I think I have another, another solution. Let's see here. Um, I am on the home screen. It went directly to the home screen. If I press back, it doesn't let me go back. It is giving me output back. He is prevented. So I should see some console there. Although I kind of see that this console is really finicky. It looks like if I clear the console, sometimes it behaves and sometimes it doesn't. Very weird. Anyway, the back button now is being prevented. I'm going to run it one more time. It went to the home screen. I don't want that back button to work anymore. That's the whole point of this. I want them to be able to navigate only inside of, from the navigation buttons that I allow in the device, in the app. So it looks like Visual Studio, in my case, in my computer, Visual Studio is not fast enough to load up for it to show the very first console outputs. We have some code in the index.js, remember at the very beginning, that checks are they logged in or not. It's supposed to be putting in the console if you're, if you're logged in or not is logged in. I'm not seeing that. It looks like Visual Studio is loading too slow for that to process. But it looks like after the app is loaded, I do get some console output now. So pressing back does give me back keys prevented. <coughs> Again, one question at a time. What was your question first, uh, Anna? Where do you see it? If you don't see a panel down here, okay, I'm running it right now, so make sure you, you're, you're running it. And you should get a pop-up This is JavaScript console. If you don't see it, you can open it up from the window menu. Yeah, window, where is it? Window, toolbars, somewhere, where is it? Uh, wind view, other windows. It showed up. Okay.
let me show another way to do this debugging. Uh, so here in, in Visual Studio, uh, I press stop, and the um, the project um, project is on my device. Uh, I'm running it on my device. Uh, I press stop in Visual Studio. But here's another way that we can do debugging, because we're if you're debugging on if you're debugging an Android app on an Android device and you've got Google Chrome, you can also use Google Chrome to, de to debug what's happening on the device. You can check the console of what's happening in the device in Google Chrome. So let me show you this. I've got the device, I've got the app running. Go ahead and open up Google Chrome. So outside of Visual Studio, open Google Chrome. Whatever loads up here, just press F12 to bring up the developer's console. When you get the developer's console on the right side, at the top right you see the three dots, which is options, and below that you see three dots as well. These are the this is the options of the dev tools. We've seen this screen when we wanted to go to virtual devices. We've got options here, customize and control dev tools. So click the that little options button in the dev tools. And then let's go to more tools. Under more tools, then go to remote devices. If your device is compatible, Google Chrome will see it for you to debug it. If you've got an older device, you know, like Android 2 or something, it might not see it. So if I look under remote devices, in my case it says I've got this device connected. Mine's a Motorola E2 or something, but it's not going to say it that way. It's going to say the internal device name, I guess. It's connected. You may see something pop up on the device about allow debugging. But if I click on the device connected, I've got my CVEB project, which I can inspect. That'll open up a different window where I can see also the the um, the console there, where it says these different items is logged in, etc. Question. It's not showing. Which one is not showing? As I said a moment ago, if the device is not compatible, it might not show up. Even if it shows it as on there, like with the Windows Seven connected. Click on the device. Well, that's how I click from uh, Google. That's from Amazon. I want to click on the SML device.
So this might be another way to do debugging. Uh, Google Chrome uh, might show different sorts of output. In my case here, it is showing the part that says ready is logged in. Visual Studio, in my case, was too slow to load up to show that part. But here it is. Now mine is saying this type error, and probably that's uh, kind of normal because I'm seeing it in the Okay, I see. Wait, actually, uh, undefined. Okay, to f to make that even more correct, if we go back to Visual Studio, <coughs> it's saying, okay, what are we going to prevent the default of the event? That event hasn't been defined. So in this function, if we say here event, that variable that is this event variable can be can be passed into the function to have some sort of event to prevent. The event of the backspace. Well, where we used on back key, where we defined it, that is, here, uh, we've set it up event, but we should then further set it up properly at the beginning, where we've got the event handler. So let's back up to the top. We had on back key down, we need to pass that event. I think the best way to do this is we'll have the parentheses of event. But then uh, let's wrap some curly braces around on back key down, and then before that, function parentheses. So we saw something like this before, but when we, we wanted to pass something in, uh, remember we had the form, <coughs> the submit form, it had a default behavior that I wanted to override. So I had to write it in this way, that we're going to launch a function that's going to deal with an event, the event of the back button that event is going to be passed into a, a defined function with event. So if I run that, it should behave the same as before, but it should be more, more correct. Run that again and just confirm that that works like it's supposed to. It's going to be in the home screen and then back, should not go back. Okay, Bouvier and Akshire, you are being a uh, 
loud again, please, if you need any help, please call me over, it's being a little distracting. So if I press this back button, um, should not go back. And then I get a bunch of prevented feedback there. So all of that is just to confirm that that's working. I'm also going to run it in the uh, Google Chrome just to kind of confirm that as well. And um, there we go. So that error that I had a moment ago was no more. That was the event. Uh, it didn't have the event technically defined so here it was giving that error. It wasn't giving the error in Visual Studio, and that's unfortunate, but that's how we fixed it. Let's do one more thing, then we'll take a break, and then we'll figure out the issues. I want to add a plugin. I want to add a plugin to add an extra feature. So, where do we go to add plugins? Config XML, yeah. So let's go ahead and open the config XML file. Plugins. Now I've got the core plugins. This is going to be a plugin outside of the scope of the core plugins. I want to add the ability to set up some sort of um, uh, feedback element. And this plugin is kind of cool because it does multiple things. It can send an email. It can send a tweet, it can connect to Facebook, it can do different sorts of social sharing. So there is no core plugin that does that. There's no core plugin that interfaces with Facebook, let's say. This is going to need to be a custom uh, plugin. So we're going to do this via custom, and we need to enter here the ID or a Git address or such to get the plugin. This plugin that I have in mind, if you go to the web browser and you search uh, PhoneGap social sharing, remember I said that PhoneGap is synonymous with Cordova. And there's a developer out there that made this really cool free plugin so that your app can connect with Twitter or Facebook. It can send a tweet, it can post to Facebook, it can also send an email. Because I want to set this up eventually so that it uh, there's a way for the for the user to to contact the developer. So this plugin will do that. Uh, this is the one here. Eddie Verbruggen. This is the developer. So any other link might not work. This is the one we want. GitHub, Eddie Verbruggen, social sharing, phone gap plugin. So I'm going to click that first result. Code of a plugin to share text, a file, a URL, or all three via the native sharing widget. So the Android method, when you look at an app and then there's the button to share, the Android version will pop up to give you some options of of sharing, of sending this to someone via email, or through WhatsApp, or Twitter. The iOS has the same sort of thing. Someone's on your on your version of the app in their iOS device, they tap the share button and they'll get a pop-up that will do the sharing. That's what this plugin taps into, the native sharing widget. 
So all of the raw code is in here, and then the documentation of how it works and how to use it. It's kind of detailed because it's a powerful plugin. If you scroll down, you'll see what versions of Android it works on and iOS and so forth. Screenshots. If this is running on someone's iPhone, if they click share, it'll pop up with the with the sharing ability that you're used to on iPhone, if you use an iPhone. It'll pop up and let's send a tweet or let's post to Facebook. If you're on the if you're on an Android device, it'll look something like this over here, depending on your device. Get a list of possible sharing methods. So you can have the person choose whatever way they want to share, or you can set it up, you can guide them how you want them to do it. So keep scrolling, there's more examples. Installation. So if we were using the CLI, the command line interface, if we were using right, DOS, we'd have to type a command in DOS to set it up. But we're using Visual Studio. So all we need to know to know is its its ID. Cordova plugin add and then the ID. So when we're in Visual Studio config XML file, this is what it's doing behind the scenes. We click the button add Bluetooth, and behind the scenes it does Cordova plugin add Cordova dash plugin dash Bluetooth. Well, for this custom one, we need this. So you can copy this line, Cordova dash plugin dash x dash social sharing, and that's what we're going to plug into the custom plugin screen in Visual Studio. Here, enter the ID of the plugin. Paste that in. Cordova dash plugin dash x dash social sharing. You click this go button. It should connect back to the website. It should see, okay, this is the plugin you mean. Right here. Social sharing. Share text, images, etc. That should be the right plugin. If it gets in some sort of error or anything like that, check the spelling. I go back to that. Uh, if you close that on the right, any of these panels that might have disappeared, yeah. you can get them back from the View menu and then Solution Explorer. So this is the plugin that we want, Social Sharing. We'll click Add. Hmm? It is, definitely. One of the big reasons why I wanted to start using Visual Studio in this class. In the old days, we were using DOS and now Visual Studio. There's still some kinks that I'm seeing as I teach it for a full class, but you know, we're ironing them out. So that plugin is installed. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll read the documentation a little bit to see how does it work, and then we'll set it up so that when a person goes to the About screen, remember we've got this About screen, I want there to be a button that says Contact the Developer. When you click that, it's going to send an email to us, the developer. So it's 8.20. We'll take a break until 8.30.